place. Uh, so before we start that story, we really want to look at you know why we decided to develop this database. In fact, uh, you know, uh, necessity is a matter of all inventions. So um, yeah, for some reason the oh I know why I haven't deleted accidentally deleted something. Hang on a second, I'm so sorry. That's weird. It is there. Oh, it's back now. So, you know, we, we were looking at explosive data growth. So when we say explosive data growth, you know, you, you're looking at um, you know, the likes of e-commerce, like uh, um, social, social media. Uh, and the prediction is that in the next, uh, you know, uh, two years, we are going to reach about 132 zettabytes of data globally. Uh, another thing is, you know, if you're running an um, uh, e-commerce website, you're running something like Taobao, you're running something like Lazada, Shopify, Shopee, you know, one of the challenges is there's a massive amount of data volume. So the massive amount of data volume comes in many different factors. One is, uh, you know, you got uh, product data, you got uh, metadata, you got, you know, customers doing feedbacks, and then you also got to do the handle the transactions. And, Nowadays, if you use a platform like Lazada, you use a platform like Shopee, you realize that every month or every now and then they come up with some uh, promotion offers, right? Of course, the most popular one is uh, W11, right? In fact, you know, it, the, the origination of this database, when the company finally decides to say, okay, enough is enough, we need to find some way to deal with this, it's actually W11 where, you know, one of the commercial databases that we were using 12 years ago, kill over and, and cost a lot of uh, pain. Another one is, is also like a stronger capability to handle the kind of data growth that you have. Um, traditionally, the, we call it monolithic database, but it's just how the database was being developed, right? So when we started to have the concept of database, we started with the mainframes and then, you know, the, the, mid, the mid-sized systems, like AS400 and so on. Uh, and then we developed into the, the um, PC era, where uh, you start to have machines uh, more like commodity hardware uh, where it's running Linux. So Linux actually is the start of the revolution. And that's why uh, I'm very happy to be at the open source platform where, you know, when I started my um, IT journey, I actually started with Red Hat Linux version 1, right? Uh, and in that time, the, the database model is like, you know, I want to find some way to store data. And it's not that much of uh, data we want to store because during that time, you know, the computers are not that uh, capable. You know, the memories, the storage, you know, we're talking like 40, uh, 80 megabyte hard disk. That's what I remember, right? That was a really, really long time ago. So going from that perspective, the traditional solution is that I make it as, I'm, I can just have bigger and more performance systems, but eventually you hit some kind of roadblock where bigger is not always better, right? Uh, another thing is, you know, then you have um, another solution is that, you know, I, I, I used to work for Oracle as well. And Oracle says, okay, you know, I can make it, uh, I can make it scale, uh, but in some sense, you know, it's still monolithic because, you know, compute, I can separate it. So what Oracle real application cluster means is that you can have a cluster of systems, um, but your storage is still shared, right? Your sessions information is still shared, your memory state is still shared. So you still have some kind of limitations. Of course, you have machines like Exadata, which is very, very capable, and it can skill to uh, you know, handle petabytes of data, but it's a really expensive, customized hardware solution. And of course, then you have uh, sharding, right? So um, a very good example of sharding would be the likes of uh, DynamoDB from uh, AWS. I used to work for them. Uh, it's, it's a kind of sharding that you do is you use a hash key and you specifically use uh, uh, algorithms to, to shard your data across a number of systems, and you can split them and partition them as much as you want. Uh, but still, you know, uh, in order to do that, it's a bit of a complication that you have to actually manage that yourself. So from that perspective, um, we think about this as more like a distributed uh, uh, requirements that eventually you need to distribute your data. You need to expand the way that you're going to store your data and not only that, is that you want to find, we're still doing like partitioning, sharding of data and so on, but you want to like also automate it. Uh, and you want to have the ability to not just like 
doing read write on one particular or a custom machine. So for some of the systems in the market, yes, you can do um, scaling, you can do horizontal scalings, um, like take um, AWS Aurora, for example, you can scale it horizontally. They have a shared storage system, uh, but there's only one instance of read and writer, right? So you have a one massive large read writer, but you have a lot of uh, readers that you can use to scale your um, um, uh, requirements, right? So for read only, you can scale, scale it to quite a bit of a size, but for for the transactions that you're writing in the database, right, you still have one single instance to do it. But of course, then you have other systems, like you know, you start to have uh, someone like uh, Google Spanner, which is kind of in a very similar concept, where now you can uh, spread it into like uh, multiple um, uh, multiple systems automatically, and you can really expand it into different uh, regions as well. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Okay. So the pain point for us was, you know, we, we have a performance uh, bottleneck. Uh, we really want to scale. And the challenge here is that uh, because we want to do the scaling, uh, we really needed to be distributed. We need to scale very fast uh, and on commodity hardware. Another one is that we need to, to eventually now we also think about, you know, customer says not only want to do the transactional. So this is the chicken egg issues all the time. Customer says, I want to do transactional, and then suddenly they say, I also want to do analytics. So at the moment, you do it in two places. Uh, but for us, we try, to, we try to say in the same instance of schema and data tables, you can do the same now. We can locate. Um, I have to go faster now. Yeah. So just to go very quickly on our evolution. We started in uh, about 12 years ago. We started with Taobao. Right, uh, we decided to really have this self-developed um, distributed architecture. Uh, initially supported Taobao, eventually we also supported Alipay. So now if you use Alipay, uh, you use Taobao, the, the database backend is actually ocean-based. Uh, and also if you look further, for, further forward, and, and then we, we start to have our uh, partners, our financial partners, they said, you know, this is great. You know, you can do like massive distributed transactions financial transactions, we really want to use it on our own business as well. So then you have uh, also the banks, um, the brokers, and even insurance companies started to use us. And then when we move forward, there's more and more commercial partners. And overseas now, we've got payment partners such as Gcash and Dana that's actually using our database platform, right? And very quickly, uh, the, the way it works for us is that it's a distributor architecture. So uh, every time you deploy an ocean-based uh, database, uh, even for a community edition, uh, we can do it in one instance now, but it's basically, uh, you need to have three nodes, and it's a cluster, and we can separate, have different tenants, and each tenant is an individual database, uh, and you can decide like which of these um, tenants, which one will be allocated as a leader. So leader means that this will always drive the whole cluster for the read and write requirements, uh, and when you want to write to the database, you're going to transact, you will always hit the leader. But uh, if you don't have, uh, you don't have, you have eventual consistency, you don't have strong consistency requirements, you can always ask the system to, to uh, direct the read to the followers, right? And then, you know, you can decide how you want to run it. And another really uh, unique thing for us is that we are able to do real-time compression as well. So it's adoptive compression so when you're doing transactions and you're storing data into the database, the database is decide, okay, what kind of data type this is and apply a different kind of encoding or compressions into the database. So it's very common that my customers say, if they go for my MySQL, um, they have a 10 terabyte database and when they go to ocean base, actually it's only three terabytes because it's fully compressed. It. So one of the reasons why we decided to go for um, open source platform is that uh, this is really where the world is heading. Okay, so more and more open source database is getting, getting adoption. And open source database has proven to be a model where um, the, uh, the more that the community is using the database, the more stable and more capable that platform is. So the best example for, for me is uh, coming in from the open source side, is Postgres and MySQL, right? Because Postgres now is what, version 15, 16 now? 15, right? And the MySQL now is on 8.0. Uh, 
uh, and, and it's because the, the community is pretty strong and uh, it, it's increasing the use and also the ability for the community to point out you know, where to improve the database. Right? So we want to have that capability as well. So uh, we are at the start of a journey of being like as part of the open source community. We started the project on, on 2021 and, and what we wanted to do here is they wanted to adopt the best practices for an open source foundation. So we're taking uh, elements from like, for example, for Apache Foundation, we're gonna have a technical oversight community. Uh, we're gonna have a development group and user group. Uh, and what we wanna do is that in it, at the moment in China, there's, there's a really strong open source community for ocean base, but we are also expanding it in, in the overseas. Uh, and this is where we are at in terms of uh, being an open source platform, uh, which we started with 3.1, where we open source three million lines of code and said, you know, we put on GitHub and says, you know, knock yourselves out, you know, the source code is here, you can compile it, you can run it, you know, play with it. And then, and then slowly the ecosystem of surrounding the, the databases, we opening it up as well. And, and just want to highlight some of those, it's like, you know, doing data migration, uh, uh, we call it the ocean-based uh, migration services. Uh, there's also the ocean-based management platform. So this is kind of unique in the sense that I have never seen like any other platform to say I've, I've uh, uh, management platform come with the open open space uh, open source uh, database platform, right? Uh, there's also the IDE. Uh, there's a few of the APIs that we are open uh, opening source as well. And most important of all is that we are also integrating with the open source ecosystem. So some of the ETL tools that's open source, uh, we are contributing code into that. Uh, for example, for IDE, you can also use dbbeaver. In dbbeaver, if you download the latest version, you'll find Ocean Base inside there. And so that's the ecosystem. And then, and then uh, towards like uh, uh, later version of the version three, we're also looking at, you know, how, how do we handle like slow SQL, top SQL monitoring, uh, and basically, you know, the, the ease of use of the open source platform as well. So recently we launched version 4.1. Uh, which is really exciting in the sense that, you know, I talk about initially we need to have like three different nodes and in this one cluster. So our open source uh, users are saying that it's a bit difficult to have that much of resource to do initial testing and development. So we kind of re-architected the uh, um, platform to, in order for it to run on a single instance of compute, but it's still a distributed architecture, right? So uh, it still retains our uh, design, but we are able to run it on a single piece of hardware now. Uh, another thing we wanted to do in, in Forward Next, eventually we want to also take on um, analytic performance uh, kind of uh, re requirements for the database, where you know uh, there are platforms uh, such as uh, Vexchief that's really strong on, on Kolama analytics. We're going to put that into our platform as well. Yeah, uh, and most important of all is we continue to improve our capability to automatically distribute the transactions uh, and the, the data uh, uh, query requirements uh, towards the, the, the node itself so that you don't have to do it yourself. Yeah? So in essence, what we wanted to do is to really share, uh, to really go for standardization. We want to be the, the, like the MySQL of the distributed database, right? So there's no such thing at the moment. There's still quite a lot of uh, uh, platforms available for the distributed database side, you know, relational distributed database, I think we're kind of unique that way. Uh, and in our case, we want to scale our user base as well. Yeah. Uh, of course, you know, uh, in order to, to, to get adoption, right, uh, we are MySQL compatible. Uh, we, are very, we are fully compatible for Wi-Fi 7, but we're getting more and more compatibility for 8.0 as well. So by the end of the year, we expect to have a full compatibility. Uh, that is our GitHub. Uh, and most important of all is that this is not a new database platform. This is a platform that's been in production for quite a while now. Okay, so in order to start with the open, open base community edition 4.1, right here is the documentation. You can come in and take a look at you know uh, what is ocean base about, you know what, what are we doing in the open source space and our community edition. And there, I apologize at the moment, it's still written in Chinese. However. You know, if you go on, you go on here, and, and you, you find, you know, that means a community community edition. You you can download the, the x86. Uh, the ARM version of that is is ARM specific, probably through China. But at the same, 
But what I'm going to ask them to do is to also validate on, on arms in the inter international market as well. For example, AWS Graviton, right? So we want to validate that. So I'm going fast because I think I'm just okay. Great. So, so, um, so thanks for that. I, I'm just going to go back here so that you understand like what's the ease of use and if you have any questions so far. Great. Tactical discussions. What consistency guarantees does it provide? Ah, consistent guarantees. So um, by default, it's eventual consistency, right? So there's a leader, there's two followers. Uh, we use PESOC's um, algorithm to ensure that the data uh, has high availability and also uh, make sure that they're reliably replicated. Uh, but there are two modes to do that. One is eventual, right? So that you can use the followers for reading. But if you want strong consistency, you can define that you want strong consistency. So either uh, the, you go directly to the leader, which of course uh, you have strong consistency, or you actually delay, delay the, the reader knows a little bit to make sure that they're all fully consistent as well. Yeah. Right. I have a related question. Okay. So suppose I want to use this for financial transactions. I need strong consistency. Mm -hmm. how, uh, how consistent are the backups? How consistent are the backups? Like if I take a backup of the whole distributed cluster, um, is there the possibility that different parts of the cluster will be at effectively different points of time when they get backed up, or do I have a completely guaranteed um, stable snapshot of, of, of all nodes? It's, it's going to be completely stable snapshot because we are only taking the snapshot of the completely stable and consistent data as a backup. Okay, that, that, that's, that's cool. Yeah. More, more questions? Yes. Right. yes. Question, please. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just want to ask, um, how is it comparable to like a like a CRM? How is it comparable to what? Sorry? Like a CRM, like a st customer relation. We can yeah. definitely power a CRM, but <laughs> but so CRM would be like 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 how Salesforce and so on, right? So sorry. Uh, are you asking um, how easy it is to run a CRM? Yeah. Oh, platform can, on it? Oh, very, very easy. Because okay. if, if you can run it on MySQL, you can run it on OceanBase. So, uh -huh. what's my selling point? My selling point is is is, is distributed transactions, financial transactions. Yeah, and it's not it's not very common for a relational database that's distributed, scalable, and they handle financial transactions. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's commonly like, you know, the, the well, but for financial transactions, I would use Postgres for that uh, because it's pretty good. Yeah, we use Oracle for that, so the SQL Server for that. Uh, but those are monolithic databases. They are not designed to be distributed. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So next question. Okay. Well. Yep, you can call me or download it and give it a try. Oh, there's, oh, a, there's more. One more question. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, I think I read it uh, somewhere that uh, uh, you uh, have OceanBase and then you have uh, PolarDB, also from uh, Alibaba. Oh, And right. uh, I think there's also something called uh, in memory something. I forgot the name. And mm -hmm. uh, and what are the, all those differences uh, uh, between? So, so, those? Um, so first off, uh, we, we are part of the N group. Right, uh, we are we are a kind of a sister company with uh, Alibaba, so Alicorp themselves has also their own database technology as well. So think of us also in AWS is the same. So AWS also have their own managed database services. Right, uh, we do uh, from a commercial side, you know, we, we do uh, sell our services on the Alicorp. Right, we also sell it on AWS as well. So we have multi cloud. So the difference is that uh, for all these different services, whether it's PolarDB or whether it's Aurora, they are always specific to a particular cloud. So you can only use it on that cloud. You can't really use it on something else. So whereas we, we are kind of different, we, we, we want to be 
um, uh, be a standard for distributed uh, database. So you can just use us on anywhere you want. Yeah, um, we, we are more like, uh, we are co competitors, if you will, right? Not really competitors, but at the same time we are, right? Because we are, we are, we are competing in the same space. I have, okay, I have one more question, then I'll hand it over here. Um, let's talk about, um, like, rebalancing data, because, you know, uh, sometimes with some distributed systems, they tend to be a little static. If you're writing a lot of data, maybe it almost ends up going to one node for one reason or another. Um, how are you able to rebalance things if, uh, if one node becomes a lot more full than another? Uh, if so, kind of, could you explain that a little bit? So, so it depends on how you want a database to behave. So if, if you let the database do the automatic like partitioning, balancing, so the database will constantly look at the different nodes and say, ah, you know, am I hitting one of the nodes really, really hard? Because sometimes you've got a hot, hot table problem, right? Where, you know, one particular node, because of uh, a kind of transactions or a region, uh, let's say in Singapore, you know, your object is suddenly really, really hot. Right, then that particular node suddenly get a really hot uh, usage, the CPU, IO, it all go up. So you can manually say, okay, that for that node, you want to split the data, and it will automatically be done, automatically by the system. Or you can actually say, you know, if the system monitors that and says, ah, you know, there's a hot, there's a hot table issue here, you know, we're going to split the data as well. Yeah, so that can be done by the database. And that's why we kind of not having that type of problem, because even you use something like uh, a sharding, you use something like DynamoDB, that's exactly the problem with, with DynamoDB. If you hit, a, you hit a table really hard, that, that partition dies, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, which is a common problem, yeah. So uh, the question is around the edge computing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, ocean base and edge computing, do you have any uh, uh, use cases that you had seen in your experience? Uh, actually, uh, most most of my customers wants it to be in country, right? So, so like if, if you if you go to Malaysia, you go to Indonesia, they, they they actually they don't even want to talk about edge computing. Is that you need to be there? Uh, it's either you're in the data center or you're in a public cloud that's in the country. And if I have customers that says I need to deploy on the edge services, which I'm talking to the edge edge. Uh, computing service providers as well, you can deploy the database at the edge. Right? It's not an issue at all. Yeah. Okay, do, do we have more? I, I love the question. Yeah, I'm sorry if uh, it sounds like a two questions within one. No, no, no. But, um, first of all, uh, may I ask you about requirements for the latencies between different availability zones? And uh, do you support multi-regional installations? Multi when I say region, I mean like all, all latencies. Right, one, one, one in Singapore, one in Japan. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Asia, Europe, uh, etc. Different continents. We we don't. Well, personally, I think that's an impossible task. That's one. Second is that within China, we actually do that. So within China, you actually do like in different, like different places like Beijing, Shanghai, or, or Guangzhou, which is pretty far. Anything that's on fiber and under, under 50 ms, like the latency must be under 50 so ms. So below 50 milliseconds. Below, below 50. 50, yeah. 15. Below 50, 50 ms. Oh, 50. Yeah, 50 ms. Mm. Yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah. We don't, yeah I, I, know, I know where you're going with that. I know where you're going there. So a lot of these distributed systems, we use synchronization. We use yeah. clock synchronization. Uh, yeah, In fact, you know, clock must be like fully synchronized. Yeah. Even Spanner needs to do the okay. full synchronization as well. And, and they have one of the most accurate clock on, in, on the earth, right? Okay. Google, Google have the hard, hard way to do it. And we have the same requirement because we are distributed systems. All right. And we have time for one more question. I don't know if you mentioned before, but I'm looking at uh, the licensing. Did you mention the licensing? Because this is uh, Mulan 2.0. Ah, we're not very familiar with the, you the Chinese this. versions. Okay, first off, <laughs> so maybe first, you can clarify. great question. Yes, I'm expecting that one. Um, I, I asked the same question because I, you know, I started three, just three months ago with them. Uh, so the Mulan license is very similar to GPL uh, version 3, right? So. Uh, it's an open license, you can use the code, but your own code needs to be open as well. It's as simple as that. 
uh, and you can include the Mulan license in your own licensing as well. It's kind of like what Spark Tree Spark is doing. So if you look at Spark's licensing, it's that, oh, you know, I'm licensed under Apache uh, uh, license version two, but then these are all the open source licenses that I have as well. So so Mulan can be included that way too. Yeah. So no issues. Okay, thank you very, very much for this wonderful talk.